Hello and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program and Massage Industry Experts. With the challenges we've all faced over the last year thanks to COVID, the EduTalk series supports virtual learning and building a sense of massage community by connecting you with industry experts who will share their knowledge and expertise on topics, not only for class discussion, but career success. Tonight's expert is Cherie Sonimo, author of Business Mastery and co-author of Retail Mastery and the Ethics of Touch, now in its third edition. In 2012, Cherie was inducted into the Massage Therapy Hall of Fame and was past president of the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education. Let's listen and learn as Cherie provides insight into the benefits of being an employee, of being an employee. As a therapist, you decide whether to work full-time or part-time, independently, or as an employee. Working as an employee does provide a sense of security as well as benefits. However, not all companies offer the same benefits. Cherie will explore key elements and the many benefits of being an employee by helping you understand what's the right fit for you. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Please, in the upper right-hand corner, switch your screen to speaker view and to sh chat Cherie questions during her presentation, please use the chat button at the bottom nav bar and at the end of um, her presentation, she will answer questions. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Cherie. And with that, I turn it over to you. I like the whole topic about employment uh, because I've been in this field for a really long time. And when I started off <clears throat> in the late 70s, early 80s, there weren't a whole lot of employment opportunities. Uh, yeah, there were some, maybe some destination spas, yeah, a couple of local day spas that might be hiring therapists, but the majority of practitioners had to start their own practice. And that has really changed over the years. And there's so many more opportunities now. Uh, and what's interesting is this, um, statistics are showing that the majority of new practitioners are actually starting out working at least part-time, if not full-time as an employee, uh, either like in a massage franchise, a resort, uh, a day spa, or even perhaps a uh, medical clinic. <laughs> now, the pandemic has brought a lot of repercussions as well as opportunities. There were a lot of therapists who shut down their practices uh, during the pandemic when they, when they weren't allowed to work. And in the meantime, many of them found other career opportunities and they don't plan to go back to massage. Uh, on one hand, personally, I, I feel sadness for that, but if they have found a new career path that brings them joy and stability, then that's great too. What that does for the rest of us is it creates a lot more opportunity um, for you in terms of, especially in terms of getting a job. Now, most cities currently allow massage, and but in addition to just allowing massage, people are starting to feel more comfortable about getting massage again. You know, they 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 trust that the therapists are, you know, keeping along with the CDC guidelines for sanitation uh, and hygiene, and and so they're feeling a little bit more comfortable about going into places. And, and getting getting massage. I mean, there's been incredible studies on the touch deprivation, what, what's been happening this whole year and the, the increased suicides and all of this because we're not getting touched. So in addition to that, companies are campaigning out there already to start hiring massage therapists. Now, before the pandemic, massage therapists were, I mean, massage like, centers, particularly like the franchises, they were turning away clients because they didn't have enough massage therapists to fill all those shifts. 
And I, I think that that's probably going to be the same in the very near future. So there are a lot of opportunities to get a job, whether you're new to the field or whether you want full-time employment or maybe you're just looking for a part-time because maybe you've got a part-time practice, but it's not enough and you need to work more, or maybe you're doing something else and, and want a simple uh, opportunity where you can just go and do massage and not have to be involved with all the other aspects of running a business. Now, some of the benefits of being an employee is in most instances, you just show up and do massage. Yes, you might have to go to an occasional staff meeting or something like that, but you're just there to do what you do best and that's your hands-on work. You, you don't have to do the marketing, laundry, the bookkeeping, the scheduling, all of those other things in most of those instances when you're an employee. Uh, one of the other benefits is you get to work on a wide variety of clients that you might not ever see if you just have your own private practice. You also get to be part of a team. You know, uh, a massage therapy career can be very lonely. And you know, when I, when I would tell that to people, particularly when I was teaching in schools and, and they would say, but, but I'm seeing people every day. Well, yes and no. When you're seeing those clients, your job is to just be a safe haven for them. It's not to be chattering away and, and, and talking throughout their whole session. Uh, so you don't really get that kind of camaraderie that you get when you have other employees, you know, time, times when you'll be sitting in the break room together or things like that. And that can really uh, fill an important psychological need. The other thing is um, by being an employee, you might have access to not only better, but a wider variety of equipment, um, products, supplies, than you would have if you just had to rely on what you could afford to put in your own clinic. Now, if you're working in a, a day spa, one of the benefits is you might have use of the facilities. Uh, also, you could have discounts on products and services for your own well-being and pleasure. The other main area of benefits uh, of working as an employee are what's called benefits. And those are things like having health insurance, um, paid time off, maybe there's a pension plan. Uh, sometimes, uh, actually quite frequently, they either provide continuing edu education or might give you an expense account to cover uh, continuing education. And if you're working as an employee, a lot of times there's opportunity for career growth and to work in the management in case you maybe don't want to be doing as much massage uh, in your golden years. Okay. So those are just some of the main benefits. I do, I know we're talking about benefits here, but I do want to just touch on a couple of the employment disadvantages. One of the biggest disadvantages is lack of control. Uh, a lot of times you, you don't have control over scheduling, maybe the type of work that you're going to do. Uh, the choice of clients, you know, now sometimes you have some, you have input to a certain degree, but a lot of times you don't. And then the other aspect is conforming to a set image that, that the uh, employer requires. And maybe you also have to alter your style of massage to work within their format. And, uh, sometimes you're going to be required maybe to do other non-massage duties. Maybe on your off hours, if you don't have a, a client, maybe you're going to be required to do cleaning or marketing or other kinds of paperwork. And then finally, the other main disadvantage to being an employee is maybe you don't have the personality for it. You know, if, if you are really kind of headstrong uh, and you like to really, really like to do things your way, you might find it difficult to be an employee. I'm kind of one of those. And again, it's not better or worse. It's just what is better for you. So what do you look for 
you know, uh, first of all, uh, when looking for a employment opportunity, I would, I would take into account, what's your overall impression? When you go to that place of business, what's the ambiance? You know, how does it smell? Is it clean? Is, is it crowded? Nowadays, you don't have the clutter because of the COVID-19 regulations, but again, there still can be clutter. Again, how does that feel to you? Does it feel comfortable? Does it feel welcoming? Uh, even with the restrictions, places can be welcoming or they can be so sterile that they don't feel welcoming. Uh, also, just what's the location? Is it in, in a safe place? Is it a place that's easy for you to get to? Uh, and then the other part is, what are the other team members like? You know, are, they, are they people that you would like to be working with, that you feel comfortable with? Uh, and again, a lot of this is just your gut reaction. And so there's no uh, scale to, to measure these by because what, what's comfortable for me is going to be really uncomfortable for somebody else and vice versa. Then the next thing is check out what their policies and procedures are. You know, and first of all, do they have policies and procedures? If they don't, uh, run in the other direction, unless they're also hiring you to organize them. Uh, so in terms of policies and procedures, one of the major categories is company. And what I look at is integrity first. You know, what are their uh, policies? Do they kind of, do they uphold integrity or do they seem like they're trying to um, maybe be not necessarily shady, but questionable in, in how they handle things, whether it be money, whether it be scheduling of therapists. Uh, also, how do they handle grievances? Do they have a grievance policy? If they don't, again, it's just another red flag. Doesn't mean that any of these things I'm saying that that, that would mean, oh, can't work for them. But if there's a ton of red flags, then you'd have to have some really strong reasons compelling you for why you wanna work there to go and take that job. Other kinds of company policies are things like compensation, uh, dress code, workplace violence. So all of those kinds of things that are the, the do's and don'ts from the company's point of view. And then their policies for the massage therapist in terms of what are, what are their policies about the interactions between coworkers? What about relationships with clients? What constitutes unethical behavior? And what, what are the consequences of unethical behavior? What about sexual misconduct? Um, whether it is on the therapist's behalf or the, or the client's behalf. And from that point of view, then we move into what are the client policies? You know, do, do the client policies out there also protect the therapist? Uh, and are they set up to maintain privacy? You know, what are their policies about tips and gifts? Um, again, personal relationships. Do, do they have issues about having dual relationships? Uh, how, do, how are client complaints handled? Okay. And then of course, issues like sexual assault. Okay. So those are kind of policies and procedures. And sometimes companies post that, usually not, but you can ask them about their policies and procedures. And going back onto part of the policies, in terms of their compensation package, you know, is it clear? You know, are there are there benefits? What what does it take to get those benefits? You know, particularly when it comes to things like any kind of pension plan. How long do you have to be working there to become fully vested? Uh, what what constitutes full time status? You know, because some companies might say. Oh yes, well we offer a pension plan. You know, once you've been here full time after three years, you're fully vested, and then you discover that there's no way you could ever qualify 
as full time. So those are the kinds of things to be looking at. And also, even though uh, maybe not so much that you're worried about yourself, but it's also important to see how thorough they are when it comes to screening potential employees. Because you wanna be working in a place that you can trust your other therapists and you can trust that the company is being savvy. You know, it, it's really essential to create and maintain a safe and professional environment. So do they do things like a background check? Okay. Do they verify your uh, licensure and references? And like I said, when it's you being run through this mill, it might be like, oh, why are they bothering with this? Yet when you think about it, it is really setting a tone for professionalism. Uh, are they confirming your, your, your past employment, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> your education? And one of the things that a lot of companies are doing, so whether you realize it or not, is they, go, they check out potential employee social media. So they'll look at your Facebook page and they'll look at your Instagram account and they'll see the kinds of things that you are posting. And that will tell them a lot about whether or not they're gonna to wanna to hire you. Another thing I think is really important to look for in a company is uh, fairness and diversity. Yeah. Um, do they, is it really an equal opportunity employment there? You know, or, or do they do things like really have a preference for a certain um, biological sex of uh, the therapist. Um, like, you know, for example, do they only want biological females working for them? Uh, do they actually have any kind of accommodations for, let's say there might be a therapist who's really qualified to do their work, but has some kind of a, a disability. And do they, do they make accommodations for somebody with disabilities? Um, another thing to look for is employee safety. And this goes from everything from, is the building structurally safe and meet fire codes? And in some cities, this is much more of concern than others. If you live in a place that gets a lot of earthquakes, uh, again, is, is the building, does it meet those codes? And then we flip from the big picture of, is the building safe to, are they doing things like providing ample PPE? Do they have equipment um, that's geared to help prevent injuries? For example, are the massage tables hydraulic tables? You know, uh, so many injuries happen due to massage tables uh, not being properly locked in, uh, either on one side being higher than the other, but also, so injuries to the therapist as well as to the client, but also ergonomically, can you imagine if you had to work on a table that wasn't adjustable and was really high and you're working with your arms like this, you are going to get incredible physical problems from that. So even though I am not in practice anymore, there is no way I would ever want to practice without a hydraulic table. And even I get my massages at home and I got a hydraulic table. Uh, not just for my therapist's convenience, but for me, because I really, I really like having that hydraulic table and my muscle lifts up. So towards the end, you know, my back lifts up so I don't have to switch and, you know, turn over and, you know, stretch to get up. It's really simple. Uh, also things like maybe anti-fatigue floor mats. Those are, can be really incredible if you're on your feet all day to have those that you're standing on. Now, are they uh, appropriately scheduling between sessions? And if the safety comes from two points of view, again, one, burnout on your part, but now with the uh, COVID-19 guidelines, you know, it's not just sanitizing, but it's really important to air out a room. And um, so how, how are they dealing with it there? Yeah. Uh, a lot of places are 
doing it brilliantly, you know, and having sort of like a room. So it's a floater room and uh, scheduling sessions so that you know, it, everything works. Yes, they, they can't book the room as, as often as they normally could, but if, if they do it wisely, they can do it pretty closely to previous and also maintain safety for both the therapists and the clients. Also, another thing for employee safety is having some way of notifying the front desk if there's a problem. And uh, one of the ways that, that I know that, that Ben Benjamin has really recommended is that you install a call button. And I found out they really aren't that expensive to do. Uh, I think it was just like a couple hundred dollars. And this is actually not just for the therapist safety, but for the client so that if something goes wrong, you can just press it. It's right under the table, you press it, and then the front desk is immediately notified and they can come and get right to your room and help you handle whatever the issue is that's happening. And again, that's for client safety too. Okay. The other thing for client safety is to have a clear complaint process. There are a lot of places that do not have that, you know, or they say they have, um, if anything, if you were unhappy with any aspect of your, your, your session, uh, you know, please feel free to submit a, a written complaint and, but then what do they do with it? So many places they don't have a, a thorough procedure for how those complaints are viewed, how they are judged in terms of what needs um, immediate corrective action, you know, what, what needs um, something even like perhaps the, the police need to be called, but whatever it is, do they have a procedure in place? Now, that kind of leads me to the whole aspect of sexual assault prevention. And uh, we just finished, uh, Ben and I just finished the third edition of the Ethics of Touch and we got it all done and did all this stuff. And then he's like, you know, I've got so much more. And he had like 18 more pages. And I was like, it's too bad, it's at press. And so he created an ebook and it's free. And Donnell will be sending you the link tomorrow. Uh, where you can you can download that and and it is geared more towards from the employer's perspective uh, for for what what you can do to um, help prevent sexual assault, uh, but also if you are you know, looking for a job in a clinic, uh, then this is will also give you some tips and go into a little bit more depth on some of the topics that we cover today about safety. So. We've, there's our, I know we, these are supposed to be about 20 minutes. Do we have some questions here, Donnell? Hi, Sheree. No, I haven't seen any questions come in, but, um, you know, just thinking of the safety aspect of it and, um, it, it, you know, if a therapist is employed at a company and, there, and massages go on till 10 o'clock at night, how do you get from the building to your car safely? I mean, exactly. it is it well lit? I mean, there, you know, these type of questions that the therapist, it seems, needs to be interviewing the employer as right. much as um, the employer is interviewing the therapist. And, and frankly, I think the potential employee needs to do the more thorough interview because it's their lives. Right. Yeah. And, and they're not just their lives, their livelihood and their safety, so. Right, so Amy, what guidance do you have as a therapist is out there um, interviewing and I'm going to say doing some career soul searching at the same time? Um, you know, is, is it good to actually, if you're offered the job, accept the job and work at it? to get your bearings straight and understand more of what you would do in private practice? Uh, I, I, how do you, 
how do you gauge that? Is that a good first step for someone that eventually their goal is to have a private practice? Oh, if, if somebody wants to have a private practice, I, it depends. Again, you know, if you have the personality and you're, you're able to just naturally talk with people and to build up a clientele, then I say just go for it and do it. That being said, the majority of therapists that I've met, and I've met hundreds of thousands of them over the year, uh, marketing is not their forte or it's certainly not their passion. And so it makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, so, so that's why I do think that, that it, it's a, it could be a very good option to work for a place, again, as long as it's a place that you're, you feel safe with, um, that's honoring you, that is a comfortable place to work in and all those other things that we said. Uh, and even though it might not be the ideal, as long as it doesn't have ne negative aspects. Uh, and then, yeah, I think it, it, can, it can be great. But the tricky part is if you do not set specific goals for benchmarks for when you are going to transition from a part-time practice with a job to leaving that job, you are probably never going to leave that job. So set those benchmarks, whether it be the number of clients you have in your client database, whether it's the amount of savings you've put away, uh, you know, whether it's the number of years you've been practicing, whatever those benchmarks are that you have for yourself, then, then it's a lot easier to go, oh, wait, I said all I needed is this. I've reached this. I can go quit that job now. <laughs> so uh, that, that's, that, that is the major thing. Uh, I think the biggest thing, though, for most people in, in having a job is the client experience. And you'll probably, especially if you're working at a, a, either like a destination resort where they're having people coming in from all over the world, you're going to work on more kinds of people with more kinds of conditions, with more kinds of background than you probably ever would just in your own private practice. And that really opens you up. And I, I, on a personal level, as well as honing your skills. So that's the biggest thing. Most places, unless you're also doing something with management, you're not going to learn anything about running your business. O other than customer service, which is really important. But you're, you're going to be able to go, I'm never going to do this. Or I'm always going to make sure I do this. Or here's one thing the company does. I might not know how to do it, but I know I'm going to want to do it and learn how to do it. So I, I do think it can be really beneficial, but have a plan and have a, have a, have a, have a diagram. It's like, okay, here's one of the things I want to learn, or here are the five things I want to learn when I get this job. And that can also be part of it. And then, and then that also gets exciting and it keeps you energized and it keeps you feeling really good about having that job versus having your own business. That, that was great. I mean, building a strong foundation for, for where you want to get to. Um, a question did come in. Can you discuss the benefits of working for an employer to find your ideal demographic slash client, um, target client? Right. Maybe. Um, <laughs> it, 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 like, yeah, it, it'll, it will broaden your horizons. So yes, in that way, you will get a better idea of, like I said, the type of clients that you want to work with, the time of type of conditions that you want to work with. And, and so absolutely, that's one of the biggest benefits of working for an employer is to broaden your horizons. Now, when um, therapists are in school, mm -hmm. is there a... a opportunity through the school is it, this probably varies with every school but would they have a career day where they might bring in employers from the community or you know at the end of um graduation it's you know you have the skills now at, to run your own practice um, and, and go forth 
and do good. I mean, how do you know how it works in schools or any tips for? I do. I know. <laughs> the majority of schools do set up a career day and they do bring in the, loyal, the, the local employers uh, to come in and talk and introduce themselves to the students and talk a little bit about them and what they look for, you know, what it is that they're looking for um, when they're hiring. Uh, and, and that can be really important because different places might be looking for all different kinds of backgrounds or uh, techniques or, or, or all of that. And uh, yeah, so, so, so most places do it. And that's why it's important for schools. And the only tricky thing is I'm, there are some schools out there who I will not mention names, but who are very strong um, opinions about the franchises. And so they won't allow them in their student days. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really sad because it's, it's limiting the student's ability to really get a good idea of what's available. Well, that's it. And, you know, it's not one size does not fit all. Right. And to know you've just invested and to know where you can go with your career and what the opportunities are in your local area is very important. And, it, and I don't know if there's a percentage of how many people come out of school and are, are just go into independent practice as opposed to seek employment opportunities. But yeah, I don't, exposure. yeah, I don't have the tip of my tongue, but um, I do know, I remember reading one of the um, uh, professional organizations, their, their industry studies, and it was a high percentage. I mean, we're talking probably like 75% went out and got a job. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now, maybe they didn't stay in it very long but a high percentage go out and get a job. And on the flip side, people who've been in practice for a while, the majority of them are self-employed. <laughs> and, and work some, you know, for, you know, sometimes they're self-employed and they, they keep a part-time practice working at, as an employee too. Now, um just a random question here. Um, when I entered the massage market, you know, at the beginning of the century, um, Steiner and cruise ships and all of that seemed like the ideal job for so many therapists. It, it was very glamorous and, uh, you know, uh, fantasies of earning a lot and seeing exciting places. With COVID, the cruise lines yeah. didn't go anywhere. Right. So now, as let's say, as uh, there's a return to openness in our lives, and cruise ships will be out in the sea. I think I saw no Norwegian was planning cruises now. Is is that a good place for therapists to look for jobs? Um, Again, that really depends on your personality, because a it is not glamorous. B, you can earn money if you're good at saving money. Um, but it's hard work. Um, the, everything I've read, sometimes the shifts are 12 hour shifts. Uh, if you're not doing massage, you're doing something else. You're sharing a room with probably four other people. You know, so they're, they're again, but for some people you're young, you're adventurous. That, that's a great option, me. Nip, nope, I have my own room, you know. <laughs> yeah, so again, it's, it depends on your personality. And, and I hate, you know, sounding like, oh, this is not good. This is good because there are so many opportunities. And what is good for you, for you Danielle, is not necessarily good for me. Uh, you know, just like I remember I was getting a massage because I always like to check out different places when I travel, you know, in those olden days when I used to travel a lot um, pre COVID. I and I remember once I was I went it was to a massage front envy 
franchise. And I got this great massage and this person had worked there seven years and she was a single mom and her daughter was like about nine now, but she had started working there when her daughter was two and it was perfect because she could go to work during the hours that the child was either in childcare or school. She came in, she just got to do her work and go home and be with her family. And she loved it, you know, and, you know, and then you hear other stories of people that hate it. So, you know, it's, again, what works for you and replay this because we talked about different kinds of benchmarks to look, look for and different things to, to check, to see, does this really fit for me? And, and it really could. I mean, I have a friend who just finally retired who worked for more than 35 years full time at a destination spa. That's a long time. And well, it depends on the benefits then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many house benefits? But anyway, um, Adele thanks you. She, she felt there were many good pointers. Thank and, you. Um, and I think it's a good time to wrap it up unless, unless there's anything you have in closing, Cherie. Well, you know, just to remind you that you know, being an employee can be a great way to start your career. Uh, and, then, and particularly, or even if you're moving into a different city and you need to kickstart your practice again. So it can be a really great way and it can afford you a lot of opportunities. And especially like I had mentioned before, you know, maybe you want to go into management and, you know, it's kind of hard to be in management when it's you, yourself and you again, you know, so, uh, so those are kind of some of the things that, that are really nice about working at a place like that. Uh, and, you know, truthfully, you know, Donnell, none of these paths, there's none that's better than the other for some right. people working their whole lives as, as an employee is ideal for them. For others, it's working, you know, ha having a part-time practice and, and, and part-time as an employee. And for some people, it's, you know, I just want to be my own boss and run my own business. And the other thing to, to just keep in mind is that can change, either due to circumstances or just you want to try something different. But don't, don't be locked into things because it might just be a really cool thing to go get a job for a year. That's right. And I loved what you said about teamwork in the workplace as well. Um, tomorrow, I will be following up with everyone um, and a, a link to the booklet Sheree and Ben have worked on, Sexual Assault Prevention Guidelines. So keep an eye on your in-basket for that. Additionally, um, the month of April, we have two wonderful talks coming up. Um, with Ruth Warner on April 6th, it will be breath, COVID, and massage therapy. And April 20th, we'll have Kelly Lenny speaking on indigenous massage techniques and benefits. So I look forward to everyone joining us again in April. Thank you so much. Happy spring. And um, keep an eye on your inbox. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.